just announced the biggest crowd in WNBL history. A proud moment. Swoops on the crowd, a massive basket. Three, you are kidding me. And the fire burn brightest. Townsville are WNBL champions for the fourth time. Welcome to the Boom Box for the Melbourne Boomers' first home game of the season against the Bendigo Spirit. The Boomers will be looking to keep their winning streak alive in their 40th anniversary as a club, while the Spirit will be looking to notch up their first victory of the season. Amy Rochi is back from concussion for her first game as a Boomer and first hit out in 345 days, while Captain Kelsey Griffin makes her much-anticipated return for Bendigo from a hamstring injury. I'm Julia Montesano, joined by Southside Flyers superstar Beck Cole. Beck, what are you most looking forward to today? For me, I'm excited for those two big names you just mentioned. Amy Rochi's massive return. She's a dear friend of mine. That back issue was awful. And then you get back, she was playing such great games in her pre-season, and then you get that awful concussion. For her, I'm so happy to see her back on the floor. And then KG23, who isn't excited to see her back in the league. Absolutely. It's going to be a star-studded show between those two today. Taking a look at the ladder, though, it's first versus seventh today. Melbourne are looking to go four from four, and the Spirit are looking to avoid going zero from four. So it's two completely different situations, Beck. How does it affect Bendigo if they were to drop this game today? It is. I know it is early on in the season, but for a team and your confidence, if you go zero and four, it, it can start to get to you mentally and it is a really long season. So hopefully they have built some confidence in their close loss to Perth the other day. They would have got a lot of lessons out of that game and hopefully they can fix a few things and hopefully come to the boom box and get it done tonight. Well, they'll have to face a really competitive opponent in Melbourne and this woman on screen, Jordan Canada, is a big reason why her team has gone three zip to start the season. She's coming off 20 points and 13 assists against Sydney, ranked first in the league for assists with 10.3, third in steals and 13.7 points per game. Beck, what have you made of her start to the season? Canada's start has been epic. Uh, she can do it both ends of the floor. She's quick. You know, she can score at will. Uh, she's getting to the rack. And most important, as a point guard, she's getting her teammate involved. And I just think she's coming off a, 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 a career... Um, game off with the LA Sparks and the WNBA and she's bringing that momentum into the WNBL and you know we're having such great players come from there and I just think you know look at her look at her, look at that stat line you can't really explain anything else absolutely one of our homegrown talents though is Kelly Wilson she's a league's game record holder as we know but she's also moved up to second on the all-time WNBL assist list passing passing sorry Melbourne assistant coach Christy Harawai in second spot she now has 1,506 assists in her career, Kelly Wilson. How does she keep doing this, Beck? It's an amazing achievement, isn't it? She is amazing, Kelly. Congratulations. What an awesome achievement. I think it's super special as well, like you said. Christy Harrell would have done that at Bendigo Spirit, so there must be something in the water there down at Bendigo, but she's a craftsman of the game, and, you know, she can find her teammates anywhere. It is such a skill, and what amazing achievement. Even just carrying the waters to the bench, like, that's just classic Kelly Wilson. We love to see little things like that, but let's turn our attention to the Melbourne lineup, and their starting five this game is Canada, Hillman, Reed, Froling, and Blitzarves. And it is Amy Rochi's first game back in 345 days, as we mentioned, Beck. Um, we, know what she, we know how great it is just to see her back out there, but what is she going to bring on the court for this Melbourne team today? Amy is really quick. She can pressure defensively up the floor. She's great on the offensive transition and fast break. And most of all, her IQ is really high, so she knows what plays to run and to get who open. And for Bendigo, they've made a change to their starting lineup today. Kelsey Griffin straight into the starting five, which is really exciting to see. Kelly Wilson will start off the bench. And then the rest of the starting five today is Ali Wilson, Kraka, Werung, and Ruth Davis as well. So why do you think they've made that change to their starting five, Beck? Yeah, it is an interesting one. Um, but, you know, 
Kelsey Griffin brings, brings that expertise. She takes her team on her back and she just has that fight and grit about her. Um, boomers, they are quite tall and athletic. So I do see this lineup really matching the boomers and I can't wait to see what Griffin has to bring today. Absolutely, she's gonna be a superstar on the floor today. Look at her, she's up and about, she's pumped and so are we. And we're also pumped because the official WNBL app is finally here. We don't want you to miss a minute of the action. Therefore, for live scores, highlights, all your player and team info and more, download the free WNBL app today. So both teams in readiness for this clash. Melbourne up against Bendigo. Melbourne have a 10-5 advantage over Bendigo in their past 15 games. But Bendigo have a 2-1 advantage over Melbourne at Parkville. So despite the ladder positions and that recent record, it's going to be a pretty even game today. We can't wait to see um, Amy Rucci back on the floor, Kelsey Griffin back out there. And Sarah Blitzar, she's also on the verge of breaking a league stat as well. Needs 15 more rebounds um, to make another stat in her league as well. So we'll bring you more on that if she gets close to it. But for now, all attention on the boom box, a full house, and it's Melbourne up against Bendigo for your Sunday afternoon hoops. And Canada will be the first person to kick things off here. Here's Blitzarves dishing it off to Reed, and that's a great start for Melbourne. Brad Headshaw, Bianca Vernon, and Daniel Batier are the refs here for today. As you can see on your screen, Bendigo looking for an instant response here. KG23, welcome back to the Signet WNBL. That must feel good. <laughs> what a way to start Kelsey Griffin. Back from that hamstring injury, she hasn't played all season yet. A league veteran, a champion, an MVP, an All-Star 5 legend gets on the board early on. Proling couldn't do the same there, but Melbourne would have another go at it. Great energy in the boom box. Melbourne's first home game of the season. Canada into Froling. Canada pulls up. And Wilson's there for the take. She uses her pace. Finds Wehrung. Griffin again in that same spot. This time Alexa dribble it. Back up to Wehrung. Looks like she's playing more of the one today. Position-wise, Kraker in the corner. Rolling with the rebounds. And off goes Jordan Canada. Just looking for an option. Nice move there by Blitzarves. And she'll go to the line for two. Boomers have been great so far, getting two feet in the paint and great ball movement. We saw that back cut of Reed on the first play and then Sarah getting to the line there. So Sarah Blitzard, as I briefly mentioned before, she needs 15 rebounds to become the 24th player to record 1,500 rebounds. So she'll need a big day today, but we're looking out for it regardless. And she knocks down the first free throw. Had a great start to the season in her new colours, Sarah Blitzarves. This is the second free throw, though. Here's Ali Wilson now for Bendigo. Scores level early doors. Griffin gets open and gets the M1. I love the confidence that Griffin is coming out in this first game back. Sometimes if you're injured, you might have in the back of your mind, oh, I just need to ease my way into it. But I love that Bendigo are looking at her early and look at the impact she's made in the first two plays down the floor. Absolutely, a beautiful little cut there from Griffin. And she likes it, clapping herself on the baseline as well, pumping her team up. You can't afford to go zero and four. It'll be a very difficult run home for them. Hillman now. That one just rattles out. And Wilson again using her pace. Crocker aims to get free, but Griffin found herself in some space. Dish it off to Davis. That's great play there from Griffin. She's already changing this lineup. Great high low action from the two tall girls out there today. And a good response there from the boomers. Sarah Blitzarves has a little giggle. She likes that. Here's Ali Wilson now, guarded by Canada. It's been a high tempo start. Wilson gets it back from Davis. Cracker just loses it, but Griffin's there to rescue it. Dishes it into Davis, bodies up, can't get the points yet, but gets her own board and a 
eventually it does go in. Blitzavs looking for back-to-back -back buckets. Hillman this time into Reed. Canada, the leading assist getter. Dishes it in, and Hillman just loses it. So the Spirit out to an early lead, 10 points to six. Kennedy Kariyama will be liking this start from his team. Away from home, the tunes pumping, the crowd right up against them. Healy Froling gives them something to celebrate. That'll be a good matchup today. Kelsey Griffin on Keely Frolley, two athletic, a bit undersized foremen. I can't wait to see them go at it. The steal here. Let's split stars loose up against Werang on the reverse. Couldn't quite bank it in. Davis gets it snatched out of her hands. Hillman's free, gets it back to Blitzars to reward her. And I don't believe that shot's going to count. Blitzars has come out with some great energy and attacking mindset. I'm really loving seeing what she's doing in these first few minutes of the first quarter. So Blitzars does get rewarded for her good efforts there. But not on the score sheet. Also, I know it wasn't counted, but I love that Hillman realised, hey, Blitzarves is hot, I'm going to pass it back to my uh, wing guard to get it open for a three. That's exactly what you want to see. Reed now. Looking for Blitzarves, and here she goes again. This time, Davis in her way. Sends it straight out of court. Let's take a look at this. Blitzav steaming in and Davison, uh, uh not this time. Canada. Dishes it out to the corner. Hillman, good rebound. First 12 here for the Boomers. Canada getting to work again. Hillman in some space. Can't find the bucket. And they hustle again here, Melbourne. That's three offensive rebounds in a row. Blitzars wants to convert. No, not again. A fourth offensive rebound. They just want the shot to drop. Canada. No, not again. And Kraka breathes a sigh of relief. But she takes it off the opposite end of the floor. KG23 is free and gets herself another couple of points. Spirit were lucky there to get away with Boomers with four offensive rebounds and a score down the other end. Not too many coaches would be happy with that. Chris Lucas will be pulling his hair out after seeing what happened there. And hasn't Kelsey Griffin got off to a great start in this game? Six points, 100% from the field. It's great to have her back in the league. Griffin and Davis have been doing a great job of making a big presence inside the key, whether that be off the pick and roll or just finding space. They've been big targets, and the guards have done a great job of getting the ball into them. Davis with four points, Griffin with six. They've got all the points there for the Spirit so far, really. Kraka spinning. Gets it out to Kelly Wilson off of her first minutes. Alicia Froling also out on the floor. This time she's not used because Wehrung's wide open. Can't convert. And a jump ball will be called. So Alicia Froling and Keely Froling on the floor up against each other. Keely Froling for the Boomers and of course Alicia with Bendigo. Wehrung. Goes left. And that's a nice move from Abby Wehrer. That's a great baseline drive. Up against the taller Reed. Use the speed to get past her. Here is Reed on the offensive end. Hillman, Blitzarves. Ta-da, Reed. Can't let loose yet. Wehrer. Flies up the floor. Frolling, double teamed. Wehrung sets her feet. And there's back-to-back -back buckets for Abby Wehrung. A timeout will be called because the Spirit are on fire. 17 points to eight. And this timeout 
Oh, we'll talk about that in a second. But look at this replay first from Abby Wehrung. That's as sweet as you like. The Bendigo are doing a great job of that inside presence. Now the tall girls have been making layups. And then you saw Canada go and trap that. And then that left Wehrung three out on the outside. So that is what ball movement is about. That is what inside outside is about. And if I'm if I'm Kennedy, I'm really happy with how Bendigo is playing right now. Absolutely. This timeout is brought to you by Signet, Australia's number one digital accessories brand. Signet continues to power the WNBL, Australian owned and designed. Signet is available at JB Hi-Fi, Officeworks, and other leading retailers. Visit Signet.com. So you mentioned how happy Kennedy would be, but what would what do you think Chris Lucas is saying to his players in this timeout? I think just a bit more ball movement. They, they are looking at that kickback. So they have the pick and roll. The guards are coming off, looking at the kickback to then go back into the post. Um, but apart from that, I just think don't rush their shots. They've got good ball movement. Be confident. The last three games, it's been working. It is only the first quarter. But uh, in the end, defense, you need to get stops and then you can run and flow into that game. But something I've liked in, a, um, in this matchup is that Werung is on Canada. Werung is just as athletic, but she provides that bit of a longer arm. So as you've seen so far, Canada's still making some good assists, but she's not able to get those layups like she is just because Werung is a little bit longer. So I can't wait to see how this goes throughout the game. Absolutely, Canada zero from two from the field at the moment. And there is that matchup you speak of back in action, this time Froling, guarded by her sister. Gets it back to Canada. Dishes it into Davidson on for her first minutes and making an instant impact. Good sub there by Chris Lucas out of that timeout. Davidson's the only boomer to have played at Parkville in this lineup. And it'll be a Melbourne ball, offensive foul. Boomer's down by seven. Early stages of this game. It would be nuts playing on your sister. I don't know how I could do it. I was thinking of playing my sisters at home for fun, cool, but when it's serious, oh, I love to see it in action. That's it, those two guarding each other. It'll be a fascinating matchup to watch. Keely's first time playing Alicia in Melbourne colours, and here they are. And it looks like Alicia's committed the foul on that occasion. I'm not sure if that shot's going to count. No, it won't. They've been doing it for years, these two, playing against each other. And you can see there's no love lost between them. No chatter, no nothing, just straight back to business. So Melbourne will here from the baseline. 14 seconds to work with here on the shot clock. Down 17 to 10. Going 3-0 to start the season. Right now they're staring down defeat and Kelsey Griffin gets a steal. She's off and running once again. KG23 is on fire. Great pressure by Griffin up the floor there. Panina being a postman, obviously not as confident with the dribble, so that was a great read by Griffin. Canada getting it to Davidson. Blitzars now, she's got the hot hand and she gets it this time to Davidson who misses the open shot. That's a coach killer there. Davidson is just so great off the pick and roll. I really rate her and her game, and I think she gets those deep seals. You can't move her. She screens hard for the guards. It's, um, you know, unfortunate she missed the layer, but she got after the boards right away, and that's what you want to see. Playing her at 101st WNBL game today. In the sixth season, her fifth with Melbourne. Layer onto the floor for the Boomers. Gets fouled immediately. Sheree Kalea, that injury replacement player for Christy Wallace, who we're expecting back in early December is the talk so far. She had that knee injury while playing WNBA. I think once she come in, it might allow Canada to play in the two, which she said she's looking forward to today in a Herald Sun article. Kelsey Griffin now. Guarded by Hillman and Canada on cue gets the steal. Third in the league for that category. Can't knock the shot down though. Kelly Wilson sees Samuels up ahead. She gets to work. Can't put the shot up. Good D there from Melbourne. Split starts now. 
finds Kalea. Hillman. Griffin just knocks it straight out of her hand. Bendigo ball. Both teams have played some physical defensive plays just then, but being smart, getting their hands in, getting deflections, and it does. It just rattles the team and your momentum and your flow. Kelly Wilson now to Ali Wilson. Couldn't make the tough shot. The last Canada to get going. Still yet to score this game, Jordan Canada. Feeds Hillman instead. Now feeds Blitzarves. Canada had to go back and get it. Found herself some space. Couldn't get the basket to go with it. Ali Wilson now. Wehrung. She's lit it up from three so far. And once again, Abby Wehrung goes bang. Wehrung with her feet set. That's a splash every single time. Canada looking to respond on the opposite end. And there you go. First points of the game for her. She's broken that 5-0 run from Bendigo. Samuels now. Wilson. Gets it off to Kelly Wilson. Just can't find someone in the paint here, Bendigo. Eventually, Wilson elects to drive aggressively, and she'll head to the charity stripe for two. Spirit have been really poised in their offense. They've had great ball reversal. They've gone from one side, second side, third side. Nothing on. They're getting a pick and roll, or they're attacking. It's really great to see. So, Ali Wilson at the free throw line. She hasn't got the best free throw record this season. 37.5% from the line. So she's going to need to improve that. 11 points per game, 5 rebounds and 3.7 assists are her averages so far this season. She's able to knock the first one down. And get her team out to a 10-point advantage. An upset this would be if they can keep it up. Knocks down the second one as well. Oh, and here she is back again, picking off that pass, getting it to Crocker and Bendigo are on fire. Oh, that hurts in the backcourt, getting a still open three. And here we go, Melbourne hoping to respond through Hillman, and they do. So just under a minute left, Spirit dominating here at the boom box. Crocker looking for back to back. Sorry, that was Samuels on that occasion. Here is Crocker. No foul called, Canada. To Hillman. And now Reed thought about it. A flex to slow it down instead. Healy Froling. Getting to work on Casey Samuels. And heads to the line for a couple. Healy Froling just the two points so far this game. A good strong drive here. Good read, she had a mismatch there on Samuel, so she went hard at the ring and got herself to the line, which is what boomers need at the, in this point of time. Ruth Davis subbed on for these last 24 seconds of the quarter. Rolling Cart knocked down the first free throw, averaging 78% from the line this season. Gets the second one to go. So shot clock and game clock equal. Here for Bendigo, leading 27 to 16. They come out with a vengeance in this first period. It's been Kelsey Griffin making all the difference. And they go again! Incredible stuff! Take a look at this. Griffin once again just finding a little open gate underneath Keely Froling. Her 12th point for the game. Can make it 13 if she knocks down this free throw. Amazing return here from Kelsey Griffin. Seven seconds left for the Boomers to go into quarter time with some sort of momentum. It's picked off again. Blitzarves is there, just pops it up. That one doesn't roll. And it's all Bendigo spirit here at the Boombox.
Use that momentum and power you've created to explode out on your first dribble. Okay, we've got two more. One. Sometimes as women, we look for perfection as opposed to execution. The work ethic is important when the players are 40 years younger than you. Welcome back to the Boom Box where it's Bendigo leading Melbourne by 14 points. We're looking at some great scenes here at the Boom Box because legend on screen Katrina Hibbert receiving some flowers. It is the club's 40th anniversary so at quarter time of each home game this season they are honouring a legend of the past and there is Katrina Hibbert there. Two-time WNBL MVP, 107 games for the Boomers between 2001 to 2009 and assistant coach with Guy Malloy. Beck, what's your connection to her? Well, Katrina, a.k.a. Froggy, Froggy Doll, yes. <laughs> she, uh, what an amazing achievement she's done and what she's created in the WNBL. I was lucky enough to, she was the assistant coach with Guy at Boomers. I was lucky enough to play under, underneath her. And then Big V for Eltham Wildcats. She was coach slash player. Ooh. And I tell you, Froggy still had it. So good to see you out there, Froggy Doll. Absolutely. Great to see her out there getting recognised with a nice bunch of flowers there. But she won't be liking the start from her boomers so far, unfortunately, because it is the Bendigo spirit who have got off, gotten off to a flyer. It's courtesy of Kelsey Griffin with 13 points, five from five from the field. Let's see if she can keep it up. Davis going to begin the second period with a bang. Ali Wilson, Crocker, Davis spinning, can't get the bucket. So a chance for Melbourne to come out and attack here. No Kelsey Griffin on the floor to start this second period. Hillman to Canada. Getting around Kelly Wilson, puts on all the moves and then kicks it out to Froling. That one doesn't fly either. Kelly Wilson now, second all-time assist getter in the WNBL. Davis up against Froling. Or well, Froling up against Froling, I should say. She gets it back from her sister and then banks it in. So a good start there for Alicia Froling. She's coming off a double-double against Perth. We hope you for the same return today. It's her first point of the game. Reed. Hillman now. And a good assist there from Amy Rochi as well. Good for her confidence back on the floor. Froley. So Kelly Wilson. A nice little pass there to Froling. Gets her own board and just couldn't quite hold on to it. Looks like it's going to be a Melbourne ball. So a basket from each team to start this second period after a very high octane, high tempo first term. Then you go, got off the leash. Led by 14 points at the end of the first break. Amy Rochi looking for her first points back in the WNBL and there they are. Yay, Amy. Uh, so great to see and her first two plays have been lovely. So welcome back to the league, Amy Rochi. Absolutely. Great to see her back. Her first game in 345 days. She had a back issue, a very significant one with the Southside Flyers last season and then crossed over to Melbourne and here she is getting her first points in Boomer's Colours after suffering a concussion early on in the season. Here's Alicia Froling now looking to respond. Where run. The pass didn't quite work to Davis. And you sense a little shift here towards Melbourne ever so slightly. 32 plays 20. Tada Reed. Froling Canada. And now Hillman share it around. Here is Keely Froling. Back up the top to Canada. Shot clock ticks down to five. Canada pulls the trigger. 
Gochi couldn't quite secure the boards. Froling tries to. It ends up back in Reed's hands. Canada can have another go at it. Uses her pace and gets the finish and one. Impressive and one there by Canada. Spirit did such a great job, though, on that first play. They, they made Boomers use the shot clock. They got them really stagnant, but then they missed that that defensive rebound, and then that's just a killer. Two points, Anna and one. So Jordan Canada puts her team back within 10 points with that and one. Kelsey Griffin subbed back into the game for Bendigo. I wonder if Griffin is on any time restrictions tonight or if she's got the go-ahead to play 40 minutes if she wants to. Here she is with ball in hand. 13 points so far. Wearung now. Crocker to Davis. Bendigo get it again. So a single digit lead here for the Spirit. Nine points to their advantage. And Wilson will head to the line for a couple. So Ali Wilson at the line. Well, not quite actually. Let's look at the replay first. Here she is now shooting those free throws. Can't quite convert the first one. Coming off 10.6 rebounds. Only shot 22% from the field against Perth on Friday night. She'll be hoping for a better return here, but those two free throws won't work. Had the five assists as well on Friday night, did Ali Wilson. So kept herself in the game. She's got two points so far today. Sometimes as a shooter, you just have a bad night, but she's got to stay confident and keep shooting her shot because that's what she's really good at and that's what will help her team. Kelsey Griffin misses her first one of the game and allows Reed to get off and running. Ooh, a bit hard on the footsteps there. Yeah, I think she was lucky to, not, <laughs> to get away with the travel there. Rochi gets moving from Melbourne, rolling. Crocker collects the boards. Ellie Wilson with no one ahead of her, just has to stop and prop. Here is Griffin to help. And now Davis posting up on Froling. Good D there by Keely Froling. Canada now. Oh, Hillman just takes a little dive there. Griffin hit the floor as well. Both players able to get up all right. See there, Griffin apologising there. Just took a little bit, a little bit of a slip. So 32 playing 23. Hillman's going to come off the floor, and Davidson heading back on. Canada. Here is Rochi. Froling likes the open look. Davidson, good rebound. But committed a foul. It's been quite even to start this second period. Melbourne's slightly trying to get back on top. Beck, what have you made of their start to this? I think they have come out with more aggression. You can see their Amy up here on the ball now in the full court. They're trying to get denials. I see them trying to be as close as they can to Griffin so she doesn't have space to work with. And even if Davis down low has been open, oh, bad luck by Griffin there, they've been going after those rebounds. So their energy and intensity is definitely lifted. Froling wants to change things, but Davidson try to wrestle the ball out of her head. It gets the stop as well. A good aggression here from Panina. New Zealand Asian Cup representative. All-star five in their most recent campaign. Canada. Being busy early. Reed able to collect the loose ball and get the rebound and kick it back out to Canada. Crawling now. Samuel's committed the foul and Froling will head to the line. 
And you can see back in that last play as well, with Werung being that bigger guard, her and Griffin were able to switch. And therefore, Griffin, just as athletic big man, Canada wasn't quite able to drive on her. I think that has been a real impact into what's really helped Spirit on the defensive end tonight. So we'll have a timeout called. And it's Bendigo 32 leading the Boomers 23. And this timeout is brought to you by your local Ford dealer, proudly supporting community basketball in Australia. So we love their support. Thank you very much to Ford. But a good timeout called here. It'll allow Bendigo just to reset. But Melbourne will come out having a good start. What do you think's the key to Bendigo holding their lead here, Beck, with five and a half minutes left to play? I, I just think they need to have a bit more poise. They have been looking inside still. So just now that uh, boom is uh, sort of hovering on them is use a pump fake, go up strong, make sure you get to the line. As well, they're on um, defense, boom is a hard hedging. So that kick back, then back into the post or that three point shot will be open. They've had some good looks that just have missed or it's gone to a jump ball or a turnover. Um, they just take a deep breath. Great time out, like you said. What they're doing is working, so just stick with it and be confident in moving the ball. Interesting to see how Kelsey Griffin's role plays out. Yet to score this quarter, lit it up in the first turn with 13 points. It's much to the relief of the Boomers that she hasn't quite got going yet in this second period, but I'm sure it's not very far away. Back from that hamstring injury. Kept her out for Bendigo's first three games. Keely Froling at the line now. Her 10th season, her first with Melbourne. Knocks down the first one. Averaging 12 points and nine rebounds per game. She's fourth in the league in rebounds, in fact. And she knocks down both free throws there. The defense chant rings around the boom box. Bendigo. Wera gets it off to Griffin. And now they share it around to Samuels in the corner. Alicia Froling good re on the rebounds. Griffin back to Ellie Wilson. They got it off to Griffin, but foul will be called in the middle of all that. And I know that three-point shot missed in the corner by Samuels, but what great ball movement. As a coach, that's exactly what you want to see. And viewing it, such pretty basketball. A great start to this game from the Spirit. It has been phenomenal to watch. Put Melbourne right on the back foot. And left to come back from a pretty heavy deficit. 14 points at the end of the first period. It's been a physical game so far in this first half. I love both teams are getting after it, up and in on their players. And that, that's what you want to see. You want to see some feisty, gritty basketball. Unfortunately for the Spirit, though, it means they are already in the bonus. So four minutes, 52 left in this opening half. Every foul here will be Melbourne free throws. So Canada at the line here. And she says, thank you very much. I'll take that. 13.7 points per game, as we mentioned. And you can see Samuels, Foley, Griffin and Werung all on a couple of fouls there for Bendigo. So just something to be mindful of if you're Kennedy Kariyama and you're rotating players around. Griffin up against Davidson, Froling with the good O board. Griffin again gets fouled on the shot. Eventually, something has to come out of it for Bendigo. They've been great on the offensive boards, and it's been courtesy of Alicia Froling. You see there, great hustle by the spirit. And it's in capable hands with Kelsey Griffin. Can't knock down the first free throw, though. They struggled from the line on Friday night as well, did Bendigo. Couldn't quite take advantage of their free throws. But this time, Griffin knocks down the second. So Melbourne looked to get going. Down 26 to 33. Canada goes in a little circle around Griffin. Griffin defending her pretty well. Rochi now putting the footwork on Samuels. Samuels will collect the board. Wearung. 
just find some time and space and find Samuels to assist her. Ali Wilson now. 10 seconds left on the shot clock for the Spirit. Canada and Davidson each take a turn in guarding a great look to Froling. Can't convert. And Davidson's there to mop it all up. Froling's missed a few cheapings under the basket there, but great pass by Willie. They were high hedging there, the Boomers. So she retreat dribbled and got it into her post. Blitzars nearly made something out of nothing and Froling took a hit on the way in. Take a look on the replay here. Blitzar's going aggressive on the baseline. Another foul there in this game. You mentioned how physical it is, Beck. That is exhibit A right there on screen. So now both teams in the bonus. So as a consequence, Alicia falling up the other end. Shooting free throws. Good refereeing in this game as well to recognize the physicality. And Alicia falling at the line. Again, they can't convert. 62% from the free throw line, Bendigo have gone. Melbourne is 66%. So both teams can get their stats up in this last three and a half minutes of the half. Here is Jordan Canada. Set the league on fire. Very big name in contention for the Susie Vakovic MVP of the league. I Ali like, Wilson. I like that Boomers just look for a play for Blitzar. She was hot early in the first quarter. I feel like she's been a bit quiet now in the second, so I like that they're looking for her to be aggressive now. Oh, over the head pass from Wilson and Froling says, thank you very much. I'll head to the line for two. So Ali Wilson with some good looks in this second period. She has. Wilson has been coming off the pick and roll, reading how the defense has been attacking her. Again, they had that high hedge and she had the whoopsie doopsie pass uh, to Froling there. Explain what a whoopsie doopsie pass is. I'm speaking like my coach, Cheryl <laughs> Chambers. She calls it a whoopsie doodle, oopsie doopsie. Anything that has a, a bit of a, a high or a loop to it, th th that's what it's called. Yeah, fair enough. So <laughs> don't blame me, blame Cheryl Chambers. All right, Cheryl, if you're watching, you're in trouble. <laughs> um, a timeout here, Bendigo 34, leading Melbourne 26. And this timeout is brought to you by CTM Sport. CTM Sport is here to transform your team's travel experience. Leave the hassle of off-court arrangements to CTM sport the experts in sports travel management get the winning edge at ctmsport.com.au so a very interesting state of affairs here both both teams in the bonus now so free throws will tend to come into this one who sort of gets the momentum leading into half time from here do you think it will be hard like similar to our game last night when there's lots of fouls called you can't really get into momentum so both teams will hopefully want to look to clean it up a little keep their hands out um, and just get through offences. And right now, the foul percentage, the foul shot percentage isn't great. That can be the difference between winning and losing a game and also just giving you that extra bit of breathing room. So if, if I was both teams, I'd take a deep breath, focus on your foul shots, and then on the defensive end, apply pressure without fouling. So Alicia Froling at the line now for Bendigo. 14.7 points and 7.3 rebounds are her averages this season. And again, a free throw miss. The one South MVP in 2022. She knows how to turn it on, does Alicia Froley. She's able to knock down the second of her two free throws. Here's Jordan Canada into Keely Froley. Blitzarves. A nice read by Boomers. They saw that Reed had the mismatch of Kelly Wilson, so they went to almost a box formation where they, they passed it up high to the big man and then looked at Reed down low for a post up. And now she's going to the line for two. Kelly Wilson with a bit to say about the call, but Tada Reed at the line. She can't convert the first free throw either, so both coaches. Pulling their hair there at the moment. And Reed can't make the second either. So the scoreline remains 26 to 35. 
Kelly Wilson breathes a sigh of relief. Gets into Ali Wilson. Spinning around Zed R. Reed. Can't get the shot to go. Trolling can't keep it in. Melbourne ball. Two and a half minutes left in this frantic opening half. Kelsey Griffin's going to come onto the floor for Alicia Froling. Four points, one from five from the field, five rebounds as well. Two fouls as well. Weirung also back on. So Kennedy Kariyama pulling out his two best players of the day to round out this last two and a half minutes of the opening half. Canada. To Froling, just loses the handle momentarily. Can't get it back on the baseline. Bendigo ball. Abby Weirung to inbound from the baseline. Here's Kelly Wilson. Trustworthy hands, as is Kelsey Griffin. Kraka. Here is Griffin for three. Yes, Kelsey Griffin knocking it down. Much needed three for the Spirit. Both teams are applying great defensive pressure. Scoring's dried up a bit. Bendigo get another steal here. Davis gets it off to Weirung. Can they go for two buckets in a row? We've got a couple of free throws before that Griffin three as well. The pass just went over Davis's head. Happened a few times for the Spirit. Canada now using her speed on the opposite end. Nas Hillman. Double teams. Good D here by Bendigo. Jump ball. And they'll get the ball back. Now out to a 12 point lead. And another timeout called 38 playing 26. A minute 24 left in this opening half. And the Spirit have just managed to get some momentum back since that last timeout. Big three from Kelsey Griffin, helping them lot, helping them greatly. So minute 24 left here, Beck. What do you think each coach is saying in their huddle? Slow down a bit. <laughs> Use our pass fakes. Come to two feet in the paint. Keep your hands out. It's it's just I think the ball movement and the player movement has died down a little bit. So. They're looking for that inside pass, which may be open, but then the guards are being a little bit stagnant. So just keep moving, be confident with, you know, your first initial action. And on the defensive end, keep applying pressure. It's clearly working. Just make sure, keep our hands out. Let's not get in more, any more foul trouble. Do you think Kelsey Griffin might be a focus of, of Melbourne's huddle? Is it ever like stopping one player or do you just sort of focus on finishing off the quarter well as a team? A bit of both, if I'm being honest. If she, you know, she's obviously been the difference maker here with with 14 or 16 points, and you know, she's she's came in, she's got the momentum going for the spirit. And you saw as soon as she hit that three, spirit, they they, they rose up, their energy was up, uh, they sprinted back down on the offensive end. But also, if you can limit every four other players, then you have a chance of winning if it's only one person on the score table. So Bendigo looking to complete their perfect start to this game. They've got just over a minute left to keep it going. Griffin fouled by Hillman. And Griffin's going to head to the line for a couple more. 17 points, six from nine from the field. She's had an electric start in her first game back this season. You wouldn't believe she's been injured for the first three games. And she gets her 18th point of the game. Kelsey Griffin, a legend of the league, three-time WNBL Grand Final MVP, two-time All-Star 5, her 12th season, her eighth with the spirit. And she's lining it up here today. 39 plays, 26, a minute left in the first half here at the Boombox. A great crowd packed in. Right now, they're a bit on the quiet side. Their team down at the moment. Canada. Can't lift him up. Davis, good D there by Blitzars. Leaves it with nowhere to go, but eventually finds Wilson. Weirung, feet set. This time it doesn't get knocked down. And Canada loses a defender. Trying to step around Wilson. 
And both players hit the deck quite heavily. That call could have gone either way. I thought Kelly Wilson actually did a great job of reading where she thought um, Canada was going to go. But yeah, that's a tough collision there. Hope those two are okay. Both players putting it all out on the line. But the foul does go to Kelly Wilson. And Jordan Canada will have two shots. Kelly Wilson's second foul. Jordan Canada, seven points, 25% from the field, but has kept herself involved in this game. Three rebounds as well. Can't knock down that first free throw. Kelly Wilson, all-time league games record holder. On track to hit 450, perhaps. For Canada, right now, the focus on her as she knocks down the second of her two free throws. A five second differential between shot clock and game clock here for Bendigo. Kelly Wilson into Wehrung. He's got some space. Dishes it into Davis on the smaller Hillman and makes her pay. So, what have Melbourne got left? They've got five seconds to get a shot and some momentum heading into half time. Frawling thought about it, got rid of Griffin. But could have knocked down the shot. But what an opening half from the Bendigo spirit. They have turned it on at the boom box, silenced the crowd, giving Kelsey Griffin a very warm welcome back to the WNBL. At halftime, it's Bendigo 41, leading Melbourne 27. And what a start it has been from the spirit. But Kennedy Kariyama will be so happy with his team's efforts, especially that of Kelsey Griffin with 18 points. The girls should be so happy. I think this is the confidence boost that they needed. And I think they've done a great job on both ends of the floor. They've kept Boomers to 27 points. That is great for two quarters of basketball. If I was them though, you can't take your foot off the pedal. In, in this day and age, any team can win on any given day and you've got to play a full four quarters. So for them, they've just got to keep the defensive intensity up Keep going to Griffin, keep going to the well dries out. And I think they've been doing a great job of finding the open man. They led by 14 at the end of the first period and now 15, despite a tiny little Melbourne comeback, it was pretty even in that second period. We're looking at the highlights of it. What did you make of that quarter in particular? How were, were Melbourne able to, they weren't able to get any run really. It was hard for them to sort of get involved in the game. Exactly, like we spoke about before, with lots of fouls being called, you can't really find your rhythm or your flow. You can't really get into that transition offense, which Boomers is so well known for. They did get some stops, and uh, I think for that first half of that second quarter, Bendigo didn't score many points, which they did well. But then, like we said, you've got to play out a full quarter. When Griffin came on, she was a spark for them. Wilson was passing well out of the on balls. Um, and down the other end, you know, Canada was doing what she could for the team. Uh, Rochi did a few really nice things with her first game back. Um, they've just got to stick with it. Boomers are an experienced team. They know what they're doing. So for them, this is a good challenge. They probably haven't been challenged just as of yet. So for them to come out, really narrow it down on the defensive end, they might talk about a few things. Griffin, how do we stop her? Do we want to change our on-ball defense? Do we not? Um, yeah, that'll be interesting to see what comes out of the second half. And one thing the Boomers have gotten away with a bit this season is low field goal percentage, but they're still getting the win today. They're shooting just 26% from the field. You can see nine from 34. The Spirit on the opposite end lining it up, 14 from 32, five from 11. Uh, elsewhere, it's pretty even. So we're in for a great contest after this short break at halftime. It's Bendigo 41 leading Melbourne 27. Do not go anywhere. Let's see if the home crowd can get up and about and inspire their boomers to a win. Or can Bendigo get their first victory of the season? We'll see you right after this short break.
Ford dealers have backed sport in communities for nearly 100 years. And now, from the Boomers and Opals to Aussie Hoops, your local Ford dealer is proud to support basketball. Because all dreams start somewhere. Nicholson goes for three this time, and Lauren Nicholson's feeling it today. Richards. That was another superb move. Now we're starting to get a bit of energy. Pass into Ruth. And then it's step lands to Kunek, who hits the three and will go to the line for an extra after being fouled. Russell, they'll run it all the way down. She lost the handle. She got time to turn, spin and score. It counts. Atwell steals and then he's denied by Izzy B. Hey guys, I'm Jade. And I'm Alex. We're here with Edward and Layla today as part of the Forward Aussie Hoops program. We're going to play some games and have some fun. One coin. What do you reckon? Oh! <laughs> the wind's not happy. He wants to win. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, wait. Yeah. Make him get excited. Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> oh, she's all over it. <laughs> oh, she saw it! You said Good game, It's the love these parents have been searching for. Now. This is the biggest decision I've had to make. Their kids will decide. You think you're ready for this? Their fate. Now you got me second guessing. Hold on to your heart. I don't know what I'm saying. For love's final test. Do you want to go for a talk? Um. The must-see finale, Monday, 7.30 on 9 and 9 now. Australia. Want to go for a ride? A summer heat wave has arrived. This is it. This is what you've been waiting for. Four spicy nights a week. It's open season. It's Love Island. Be afraid, boys. The power has shifted. <gasps> the girls are in charge. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? Surprise! The steamy villain era has arrived. New Love Island. New episodes drop Monday to Thursday on 9 now. Welcome back to the Boom Box, where it's the Spirit leading the Boomers by 15 points at the end of the first half. Julia Montesano and Southside Flyers star Beck Cole here to take you through the second half action. It was the Yarrenback Falcons getting the job done on the court during halftime, but now these two teams got to get back into it. And we're going to see who's going to win in this second half. But Beck, what did you make of that opening half and what are you expecting to come up here in this second half? I thought the first quarter was great. Ball movement, transition, um, the, just the competitive nature of both teams was super impressive in that first quarter. The second quarter, a bit more stagnant, fouls being called, each team not really getting into their rhythm. So it's good to have a, you know, this halftime break, refresh, come out in this third quarter. Bendigo will be really confident with this start, especially like we said, 
They're zero and three right now. They're going to want to really dig down deep and finish strong. And Boomers, they're going to know that's not their greatest half of basketball. They know what they can do to be better. I'm intrigued to see how they come out in this third quarter, whether they're getting after it or they're a bit defeated by it. So what does each team need to do to win from here? What's going to be the key sort of stat or factor to, to get Melbourne the win and then to get Bendigo the win? For Bendigo, they've done a great job. You've not let a team score over 30 in the first half. That's super impressive. If you can keep a team under 60 points, even 70, I think Bendigo will outscore them and beat them in this game. But for Boomers, they just need to keep getting ball movement, go back to what you're really good at, find the open people and I think Kit screens hard, come off it. Um, I'd like to see them maybe look at Canada and Blitzarves a little bit more off some on balls and see if they can get to the line that way or get some open shots. Absolutely, those two have been some key playmakers for Melbourne. In fact, Jordan Canada is leading the way with eight points. Keely Froling with five and Blitzars with four. She was lining it up in the first period, but it's gone one from seven from the field this game. So interesting to see how she comes and bounces back. Kelly Wilson on screen has a tough job of guarding Canada. I mean, what makes it so hard to guard a player like Jordan Canada? She has been pretty difficult this whole season. She's so crafty. I think she can read the game really well and, of course, her speed. So you might think you've got her, but she'll hit you with a hezzy or a crossover. And as a defender, you can't stand up. As soon as you come out of your stance, she's a point guard. She's got great handles. She'll be able to re-attack you. So you always have to make sure you're staying down. And I think, obviously, she's leading the league in assists. She knows how to pass to her teammates. And she's going to take what's open. That's what's something else that is really great about her. Kelsey Griffin's had an electric start to this game. 18 points and 66, 66% sorry, percent from the field. It's like she hasn't missed a beat. You can't even tell that she's missed the start of the season. She has absolutely been lining it up from everywhere on the court. What have you made of her start to the game, Beck? Absolutely wild. I, I love it. <laughs> what a comeback. She's been aggressive. You can tell, I think... The Bendigo spirit has actually lifted, no pun intended. Um, but I think you can just see they've got a bit more confidence and she's just been strong. She's been attacking. She, As a foreman, she has a bit more of a height advantage. You see her here using her length, getting up the floor on defense for an easy two. She's been absolutely great. And if I was Griffin, I'd be like, welcome back, sweetie. Welcome back. <laughs> it's like she hasn't missed a beat. It started in the starting five. We thought she'd be on limited minutes. So far, it's not really the case. We'll see what happens in the second half, but she would be very impressed with her start and her team start as well. And we see, we saw some shots in the crowd earlier on. It's a full house at the boom box. I mean, Beck, what's it like playing in front of a crowd like that um, again, as, as an opposition player and both as a home player as well? The boom box is such a great environment. Credit to WNBL and what they've done with their club. It is amazing to see, you know, all the purple that that is around there and the cheering and the support for the women's game and Boomers has just elevated each year and it has been great to see as I was there for four or five seasons um, during my WNBL career and then you know as a as a flyer <laughs> player I love going in there because that's why you play as an athlete well for me personally I love the atmosphere I love going against the crowd there's been many players who have played for both teams and it's just a fun environment and this is why we play basketball. Absolutely and the Bendigo spirit are absolutely lifting off the crowd even though they're, they're not really with them but they have lifted and got the perfect start to their game. They haven't got a win yet for the season yet, the spirit. They played some really good basketball against Perth going down by 10 on Friday night, take a lot of confidence out of that result and clearly it's shown today they've come out with a vengeance it's been largely thanks to that woman on screen, Kelsey Griffin, back from injury. And 18 points to start off her opening half. Second half tipping off here. It's Spirit 41, Boomers 27. And a packed out boom box. Canada. Pops the shot up and that's the perfect start for Melbourne. Just like we spoke about getting Canada off an on ball, seeing what she can do with it. She hezzied, Bendigo faded away. She got that lovely layup. Oh, and a steal here for Reed. And that's another perfect start for the Boomers. Tada, Reed taking it end to end. And just like that, Bendigo's lead cut down to 10. Kraka. Griffin. 
and now Weirung. Eight points for her to start this game. Ali Wilson. Kicks it back out to Weirung. Two seconds, two seconds left on the shot clock. And Davis is there for the easy putback. Again, great defense by the Boomers. You just have to finish off with those box outs. Let's see what they can do on the offensive end here. Reed to Canada. And Hillman into Blitzarves. And there she is, Sarah Blitzarves, back on the score sheet. Similar to the first quarter opening, Canada, Blitzarves, they're getting up and about. Good to see by the Boomers coming out in the second half. Where are looking to respond? That one just rattles out. And Canada can get going again. Finds herself some space. It ends up in, with Hillman somehow. Good D there by Davis, and Griffin collects the rebound. The crowd comes to a hush. Wilson into Davis. Reed came in to help. It allowed Werung to get free. Oh, and a nice little circus shot there from Davis. Back to back buckets for her. She's been great on the O glass so far in this quarter. Uh, if I was Boomers, I'd be making sure, even if you can't box her out, front check her and push her out as far as you can. Blitzar's finding it hard against Kraker. Eventually, Canada's there to help. Shot clock down to five. Froling thinks about it, then drives hard. And Wilson slaps it out of her hands. And Bendigo get the stop. It's a great defensive hustle there from the Spirit. Biggest lead of the game, 16 points for the Spirit. Boomer's biggest lead was just two points after Tara Reed opened the scoring. So the Bendigo Spirit have put on a clinical performance so far. Davis against Hilbert. Oh, great spin move there from Ruth Davis. What patience and what footwork. She got double teamed, used a pass fake. The Boomers defenders got out of that trap and then what footwork for a layup. That was really nice work. Six points for the Spirit to start off this second half and six points for Davis. It's been all Ruth Davis so far. And Bendigo get another stop. Boom is not coming out of half time as they like. Take a look at this from Ruth Davis. Just pivots and knocks it down. So Kraker and Wilson set to work in tandem here. Spirit playing a very high scoring brand of basketball as well. Nearly up to 15 points. Griffin hits the deck again and this time a bit slower to get up. Oh. And she's clutching that knee. Hopefully it's just a corky into the kneecap, which is a bit stiff for a second. Hopefully she can walk this out. She's staying on the court for the time being. Let's take a look at it here. Ooh. She just collided with Hillman. So we'll keep a close eye on Kelsey Griffin and bring you any updates if they come. But right now she's happy to stay out there. So too is Nas Hillman. Good to see her all right up and running as well. For now, it's Bendigo ball. They've got business to get on with. Davis travelled. This time, didn't quite get the pivot working. So a good stop there for the Boomers. See if they can convert on the offensive end. Blitzarves kicked off the scoring in the second half for her and goes again. Davis there to mop up. Ali Wilson looking to run a play now. Asks for some movement from her teammates. Gets Weirung. Kraka finds some space. Ducks underneath Blitzars and then somehow it ended to Griffin and then Weirung. And the Boomers breathe a sigh of relief as Canada ends up with the ball on the opposite end. Blitzars thought about the three. Then went in a bit closer for the long two and that looks good. Sarah Blitzar is getting her mojo back after a hot start. Ali Wilson. To Davis. Collected it eventually and then somehow scooped it in. Ruth Davis is putting on a clinic at the moment. 14 points for her. 
She's been really impressive this game. Her poise with Boomers doubling down. She's kept the ball high. Hillman can't respond. And bending off and running again. This time, Ali Wilson wants to use her pace. Kraka thought about it, then went baseline. Griffin, with all the space in the world, can't knock it down. Hillman. Good defense by Blitzarf there, cutting her off at the ba baseline. That is quite hard on the offensive transition. Oh, and Canada goes coast to coast. Much needed bucket for the Boomers. And Canada delivers. Here is Kraka getting it out to Griffin in the corner. It somehow ends up with Werung. Ellie Wilson thinks about it, goes for it, can't knock it down. Blitzarf's off and running. Got Hillman ahead of her, instead goes back to Reed, who gets it to Canada. Canada looking for back to back buckets of her own, and she gets it. She's one player they need to inspire their team, the Melbourne Boomers, leading their scoring at the moment with 12 points. I think if Boomers get another score here, I wouldn't be surprised if Kennedy calls a timeout just to take a deep breath and stop that momentum. Ali Wilson holds the momentum on her own with a massive splash three. That'll be a good confidence shot for Wilson there. The first three of the game. Hillman now into Reed. Hillman gets it back. And Griffin running on that knee that she hit the deck with before and she fires an open lane. Kelsey Griffin. Says, I'm absolutely fine. That was a nice crossover on the offensive transition for the four man. Just like that, the spirit back out to that lead they had at the end of the first period 14 points. Blitzavs into Hillman, into Canada. Shot clock ticks down to four. Canada just pops it up. Hillman has a bit of company and loses the ball. This is remarkable stuff from the spirit. They are full of energy at the moment. High fives all round as a host of subs come onto the floor for Bendigo. And Kelsey Griffin can take a much deserved seat. 20 points, 58% from the field. Looks like Kelsey Griffin's gone straight to the tunnel just for some assessment on that knee. So she looked fine running on it. But of course, we know she collided with Hillman. So we'll keep an eye out for her and give you some updates. She used to emerge from that. All good. Crowley, Kraka, Kelly Wilson. And that gets taken off her. Froling can now use her pace and her movement as well. A little bucket throw didn't quite pay off. Kraka keeps it in and gets it to Kelly Wilson. They kick it out to Werung. And that was perfect from Abby Werung. A timeout will be called. Abby Werung knocks down another three. And Bendigo are just humming at the moment. 57 playing 40. And this timeout is brought to you by Ford Aussie Hoops. Ford Aussie Hoops, the perfect introduction to the world of basketball for kids aged 5 to 10 years. Visit aussiehoops.basketball to register. So Kennedy Kariyama in his huddle there. What do you think he's saying? I mean, it, we thought for a second Melbourne might come back. They got within nine and then all of a sudden the spirit got back out to a nearly 20 point lead just like that. That's been the name of the game. Just as you think boomers have made their way back, you know, they're, they're crawling back that margin to, you know, 10 points, nine points. Spirit just stay composed and then they exceed, extend that um, their margin out again. And it is so deflating because I know as a player, you get confidence in knowing, hey, we're making our way back. you got to stay confident with it. It's a four quarter game. you still got time, but credit to Spirit to just keep doing what they're doing because it is working. Great ball movement, as you saw Werung in the corner three. That's her shot. Good to see Griffin is okay back out there. I think she just needed a few stretches. It looked like a corky on the replay, so she'll be sore tomorrow. But um, if, if I was Kennedy, I'd be saying, keep doing what you're doing. Stay confident in this. Keep the ball moving. Keep crashing the O-boards. 
and I think if you can win these two quarters, you'll win this game easily. So 57 playing 40. Would have been a very different mood in Chris Lucas's huddle. He's brought Amy Rocci on out of that timeout. The 222s going up against each other. Blitzars now into Canada. Davidson also back onto the floor. Here is Blitzars for an early look, and she knocks it down. That's exactly what the Boomers needed out of that timeout. Blitzars has been great attacking on that side of the floor in this third quarter. She's hit a jump shot, a couple of threes. Good to see to get the momentum for her. So Kelly Wilson now, can she orchestrate here. Gets it to Kraka. Just the three points for her so far this game. Can she get her sixth? Not quite. And the Melbourne ball here. So a foul called there on Alicia Froley. Back onto the floor after that timeout. You can see they're just shoving Blitzarves out of the way on that rebound. Rochi now. Two minutes left to play in this frenetic third term. It is a good look for the Boomers when you can put Rochi in as a point guard and Canada in the two to give her more of that scoring opportunity, which I think in the third quarter they need right now. And it comes there from Blitzars, who's on fire from three-point range. She's feeling it. She's feeling it. Back-to-back -back threes for Sarah Blitzars. Takes her to 15 points for the game. Kelly Wilson. It's a cracker. Weirung has had space all game, but this time can't knock it down. He's hit three three-pointers, Abby Weirung. Canada now. Going up against her and then dishing it into Davidson who knocks Samuels out of the way. Offensive foul. Good D there by Casey Samuels. That is a big defensive play in the name of the game at the moment. And you see Boomers crawling their way back. Kennedy's puts up Griffin and Wilson back on the floor. So he can tell Boomers are getting a sniff here. Some great coaching there by Kennedy to recognize the momentum switch. With Blitzars hitting back-to-back -back threes, and then Samuel's getting that stop as well. Looking to capitalize off that. Griffin, of course she knocks it down. Bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. Absolutely. 60 playing 46 now. And again, Boomers edge it back, and then you, you know, you leave a shooter wide open, and it, oh, it just stings. Canada now, with seven seconds to work with on the shot clock. A bullet pass out to Rochi. She couldn't convert. Davidson's there for the offensive board. Canada can go again. Getting to work on Ali Wilson. Finds herself some space and a bucket as well. Just that little step. Gets her all the space in the world. Griffin wanted that deep three again. This time goes for a two. My goodness, Kelsey Griffin. Unstoppable at the moment. And if you're making your shots, that makes the defense then do a longer closeout, and that's where she had that rip to the basket. Seven seconds left here for the Boomers. Reed drives in hard. And it's going to head to the line for two. A big part of the Spirits game as well, they managed, is that they managed to keep Tadar Reed quiet as well. She's had a fantastic start to the season, averaging 15.7 points and eight rebounds, coming off 19 points and 85% from the field against Sydney and 75 from three point range as well. Yeah, she has also been a great addition to the uh, Boomers team. Obviously her first season in the league. So, uh, you know, not many people know what she's about, but she's made a big impact so far this season. And I tell you what, the spirit are making a big impact on the floor right now. Just 10 minutes to go if they can keep it up and taste their first victory of the season at three-quarter time. It's Bendigo 62 leading Melbourne 50. And wow, well, Chris Lucas sure does have a lot to talk about in this huddle here. Beck, what do you think's his main messages here to try and get his team back in this one? You need stops. To win the game, you need to get stops and then you need to go get scores down the other end of the floor. And, you know, at the moment, only Canada and Blitzarves are in double figures. So a lot of the time, if you can get about four players in double figures, 
that, then you'll be able to win games. So I, I like seeing Canada coming off the on balls. I like seeing Blitzarves coming the off ball actions. Um, great to see Reid in the lanes. She is good at doing that. Um, th yeah, they just really need to dig down on defense. Absolutely. And despite what it might seem like, Melbourne actually won that third period, 19 points to 16. So. They just needed a quarter like that to try and get back into it. But Bendigo right now, it has been the Kelsey Griffin show. She continues to dazzle with 25 points in this game. How long could she keep it up for? Can she steer this team to a win, Beck? Look, I think she can. She's played three quarters of pretty amazing and impressive basketball for her first game back. And she's confident in her shots that she's taking. She's doing it from inside, outside. Um, and I think they've all been working really well together. They have three plays in double figures. They're passing the ball really well. As you can see, they have 12 assists. Um, and and they're, both teams are level on the turnovers. I think in the third quarter, they've really um, narrowed down on that. And the field goal percentage there, 18 of 50 from the Boomers. So both teams have taken the same amount of shots. 18 the Boomers have made and the Spirit have made 23. And then three pointers as well. The Spirit continue on their merry way. Boomers got back into it off the back of Sarah Blitzar. He said she might be the key player here for the Boomers to try and get back into this one, as well as possibly Jordan Canada too. Yeah, Blitzarves has really got her groove going in this third quarter. I think if she can stay aggressive, hit her open shots, um, if I was Bendigo, I would, I would look to lock down Canada and Blitzarves in this fourth quarter. And I think if you can do that, you're probably going to get the job done today. So the Boomers have got to put it all, all on the line here. The Spirit have led at the end of each break. 50 plays, 62. Bendigo searching for their first win of the season. Kraka can't get them off to the perfect start just yet. Canada looking to do so for Melbourne here. Goes behind the back, gets it to Froling. Wilson staying right with her. Keeley Froling for three. That's a great look from Keeley. I love that Boomers have come out of each half, each quarter, really attacking and really confident. I think that's, that, that's what you want if you want to win a game when you're down. Kelly Wilson now kicks it out to Ellie Wilson. And she stepped on the line there. So it's been a pattern so far for the Boomers this game, as you mentioned, but they come out really well. They've just got to keep the momentum for the rest of the quarter and who knows what could happen. Spirit, meanwhile, have done it the hard way, really. They've dug deep. Three players in double figures. Griffin with 25, Davis with 14, and Wearong with 11. Blitzars with 15, and Canada with 16 for Melbourne. Shot clock down to five. Canada, let's loose again! She's been hitting her jump shots. I, I wouldn't surprise me if maybe Bendigo I'd potentially even look at trapping her, get the ball out of her hands and make someone else create. And just like that, the Boomers within six points, 56 plays 62. And this timeout is brought to you by the WNBL app. The official WNBL app is finally here. We don't want you to miss a minute of the action. Therefore, for live scores, highlights, all your player and team info and more, download the free WNBL app today. And if you're a Bendigo fan turning on the app, you think, oh, wow, this is pretty good. But Melbourne just clawing their way back into this one. It, the game is right in the balance now, Beck Cole. It is. It's a game of four quarters. And you can't ever go into a game thinking you're going to beat the other team. If you're up at half time, you can't think you can now just rest on your laurels and that you're going to win this game. That's what I love about the WNBL. Each team is competitive. Each team is feisty and gritty with so much talent. And this is, you know, I know it's a low scoring game, but also this is what makes it so exciting because you never know who's going to win. Absolutely. 62 playing 56. The Spirit have led at the end of each break. They led by 14 at the end of the first, 15 at the end of the second, and 12 at the end of the third. Canada now up to 19 points, just like that. 50% from the field, six rebounds and four assists. They hit back-to-back -back threes to start off this fourth period. Spirit are scoreless so far. What have they got left? Davis finds Kraka. Wilson a deep three. And Froll in there for the rebound. You can hear the boombox starting to get around their plays. The momentum is swinging their way. When you're playing in an atmosphere like that, it's almost like a six man is on the floor there with you. So we'll see if that can help carry them through this last quarter. Canada. 
Ada with some help by Hillman. Eventually got held of the ball. Amy Rochi lets loose. And a big three from Amy Rochi back from injury. Puts her team within three. They have lit it up from the perimeter. And there you go. They have another stop here. They've clawed their way back into this game here, the Boomers. Who steps up for the spirit now? It's been Kelsey Griffin this whole game with 25. Here's Hillman with poise to get it out to Rochi, who loves that spot. If I was spirit, you've missed, the shots have been wide open on the three. Now you've missed a couple and it's a close game. Look at the shot fake and attack the basket. See if you can get to the rack now. Rochi again. Can she go back to back? Not quite. Griffin. Mops it up, gets it to Kraka. Bendigo desperately need a basket. They've been playing so well from start to finish. They'd hate to lose it from here. Griffin. Dishing it into Froling. He gets it back to Griffin and there was a foul called. It'll be a Melbourne ball. I think the foul was called on Griffin. That is a massive stop for the Boomers. She made the nice move around Hillman and then Blitzar is playing straight on the defense. Griffin ran straight into her. So the Boomers could potentially level the scores here. Let's see what Rochi's got up against Ali Wilson. Blitzar's now. 15 points for her this game. Canada with 19. Goes left, goes right, kicks it out. Rochi loops it in. It's a one-point ball game at the boom box. Froling manages to keep it in. Jasper turns it over on the pass back inbound. And Melbourne, just like that, have the chance to take the lead. Amy Rochi with five points in a couple of minutes to perhaps inspire her team to a lead here. Canada. Melbourne take the lead at the boom box. They haven't led since Tadari opened the scoring with an early bucket and the crowd is going absolutely bananas. Timeout called. 63 plays 62. What a turnaround from the boomers it has been, Beck Cole. Chris Lucas would be a happy man in his timeout. Credit to the boomers not giving up. They have kept fighting and now the momentum has swung their way. Like I said earlier, I'd be interested to see whether ch they will change their pick and roll defense. I don't think you can allow Jordan Canada that much space on her jump shot. She's hitting them in these games. So if I was Boomers, you're defending really, really well and then you're coming down. You have much more ball movement um, and great assist making than you did in the first half. And if I was Bendigo, I think take a deep breath. You're okay. It's only one point. You've got to remember, you're only down one point. You're not, you're not down 15 points. Get the ball moving. Keep looking inside. I think let's get two feet in the paint and let's get to the rack. So a 13-0 run from the Melbourne Boomers has seen them take the lead in this game. You saw on the screen just then, Kelsey Griffin is up to four fouls. So Kennedy Kariyama's got a lot of issues on his hands, not only losing the lead, but also potentially having to manage Kelsey Griffin and maybe even having a foul out. So a bit of a pickle now, just like that. They were humming Bendigo. They were leading by double digits at every break. And now they're in for the fight of their lives, trying to notch up their first victory of the season. Melbourne looking to go four from four. Kelsey Griffin still out there for Bendigo. Gets I, it into Wehrung. If I was Boomers, I would look to attack Griffin down on the other end and see if you can get her fouled out of this game. Kraka couldn't get the shot to go on one leg. Froling's there, though. A good steal. Bendigo looking to take back the lead. Alicia Froling can't dump it in. Gets it back. She's got hands all over her. And she'll get the ball back from the baseline. Froling's done a great job. Yes, she's missed some shots, but she's hustling and she's getting after those offensive rebounds. And she's just made the extra two offensive plays that Bendigo have been able to get. 
Four points and six rebounds for Alicia Froling this game. Leading her team, oh sorry, Ruth Davis leading the team in rebounds with eight. Davis not out on the floor at the moment. So crowd comes to a hush. It's tense moments here in the boom box. Six minutes left to play. Kelly Wilson. Crocker. He's rolling up against Froling. Gets it back out to Marin Crocker. Griffin, brave in collecting the rebound and dumping in her 27th point of the game. Breaking a 13-0 run and getting her team back in the lead. Big, big board by Griffin. Here's Rochi now. She's had a great fourth term. So too is Blitzars. Nearly loses it on that occasion. Canada gets it to Hillman. And that is a great feed from Jordan Canada. And Hillman says, thank you very much. I will finish that off gladly. Melbourne back in the lead. Where um, harassed there by Canada. Crocker loops it back up to Froling. Kelly Wilson. Griffin for a long three. Can't make a count. Good shot clock awareness there from the Boomers. Rochi. Froling has some space. Canada, Blitzars, they share it around. Blitzars can't knock it down. Rochi, it falls back into her hands. Fresh 12 here for Melbourne. Scoops it in and a foul called. Bendigo get their way. Wilson did a great job there as a smaller guard on a strong, bigger Hillman. To, to be strong, stay low. There were a few play phases where they couldn't actually get it inside because she was doing a great job and she was able to um, get away with the Hillman getting an offensive foul. So that's a big play in this stage of the game. Interesting move there by Kennedy Kariyama. Wehrung and Griffin come off his team down by one. Four minutes 37 left in this game. It might just be for a quick breather. You would rather it now with four and a half minutes to go than when there's about two, three minutes left. So they might just need a quick breather and then they come back straight back in. Let's see what they can do without them on the floor. Ruth Davis has been more than capable this game. 14 points, eight rebounds. Wilson and Crocker share it around. Wilson dumps it into Davis. Shaky hands there, but got it back eventually. Hillman, good defense. It affects the shot. Frolin gets a snatch out of her hands, and the Boomers are up and about with that defensive effort. Canada wants to make a count offensively. It just rattles out. Wilson, desperate. 39-year-old hits the deck. It'll be a jump ball, I believe. 65 playing 64. Four minutes left. Canada leading the way with Melbourne. For Melbourne, sorry, with 21 points. Griffin, top scoring for Bendigo with 27. Her career high is 31 points, Kelsey Griffin. So she might be in for a career best night, returning off injury. But more importantly, she'll want a spirit win. Kennedy Kariyama getting very emotional there on the bench. You can tell how much this means, this Bendigo Spirit team. They've gone winless to start their season. They've come close in a few of their games. Just haven't quite got the job done. Canada has stepped up in this fourth term and she does it again. Tough shot. I just think if you're Bendigo, you need to change your defense on the pick and roll. She's hit too many shots now. Melbourne out to their biggest lead of the game. Froling. Not often you see her knock it down from there, but she does it in a clutch moment. Alicia Froling. Spirit down by one. Canada to Froling. Healy, that is. Hillman. Back up to Canada. Keeps Wilson nearby. 
Healy frolling. She says, whatever you can do, sis, I can do better. We love the frolling sisters lighting it up at either end. It is anybody's game. The frolling parents watching on nervously at home. And Wilson in Canada collide and hit the deck quite heavily. Wilson just holding her nose there. It's been a physical battle. We've seen players hit the deck throughout the game. And there you go. Canada just knocks into Wilson's nose and then hits the deck herself. Wilson happy to stay out there for now. Griffin back on the floor just like that. Two minutes 59 left to play. Spirit down by four. Here is the star playmaker. Gets it off to Crocker this time. Too much heat on the shot from Merrin Crocker and it falls to Melbourne. Canada, 23 points for her this game. What she got left. Hands it over to Keeley Froling for back to back threes. Keeley Froling is absolutely feeling it at the boom box. Timeout called. Boomers up and about. They lead. 73 to 66. Two minutes 39 left to play, and Keely Froling is feeling it. Boomers have had some great last possessions on the offensive end. They've, they've got to re be really happy with what they've produced. Canada's been coming off pick and rolls, finding open men. The shooters have been confident getting their shots up. Been absolutely fantastic from Melbourne. 23 points to four in this fourth term. And Kennedy Kariyama, what's he saying here, Beck? What can they do to wrestle this game back? They have been brilliant. It would be a shame to lose this way. You have two and a half minutes left in the game. You're still not out of it. This is still a game where you can come back and you can win. On defense, have to be more aggressive on the pick and roll defense. And then you have to finish it off. You have to get the rebounds. If you guys get stops, then they're able to run down on the offensive end. I wouldn't be too surprised if they look at a play for Griffin or even Davis has been quite impressive tonight to get her a nice big seal inside. Tell you what though, Keely Froling up to 14 points and four rebounds has hit three threes this game. Alicia Froling hit one at the other end to try and inspire her team. But right now, they're struggling. Let's see if they can come out of this timeout and get the lead back and get their first win of the season. Here is a play for Griffin. Oh, and knocks it down. Incredible. Silences the crowd, Kelsey Griffin. And it's just as you predicted, Beck Cole, a play here for Kelsey. And she makes it count. That is a tough and one. This last quarter has been so impressive. Both teams attacking the rim hard, finishing shots, getting and ones. Just what you want to see. And she converts the three point play. Kelsey Griffin. Four points the margin. Kelsey up to 29 points. I should say 30 points actually. A 30 piece for Kelsey Griffin in her first game back from injury. Canada can't bank it in. Hillman got it snatched out of her hands. Wearung off and running. She's been feeling it from three-point range. This time she goes inboard. Wilson. Oh, blitz arms. Great read. And Wilson harassing Rochi there on D. It still ends up with Canada. We're under two minutes now. 73 plays 69. Canada. Been monumental 23 points, seven rebounds, seven assists. And Ali Wilson can get off and running here for the spirit. Here's Griffin for three. Kelsey Griffin does it again. This is nuts. This last quarter has been so good. Oh, people are getting crucial stops going down the other end, hitting threes. I can't keep up. It is a one point ball game. Kelsey Griffin. A career high, 33 points with that three. Most importantly, her team's back within one. They are clawing and fighting and willing their way to their first win of the season. They're still down by a point. A minute 31 left. 
What's Kennedy carry armor got left in his bag of tricks back? Oh, if I'm being honest, oh, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> I know it's only a round game, but oh, this is what you want. This is what is so exciting. You hear the boom box going off. Kennedy, I think he'll be drawing up a couple of plays. What, what they do if they foul. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether or not they go to Griffin again or have it as a decoy to get someone else open because Boomers will be knowing that she'll be the one one to go to. But on the defensive end, it'll just be hustle. It'll be grit. It's all the effort things. And then you must finish the play. You must box out. What about Chris Lucas? What's left here for Melbourne? Can they keep this lead? Can they get their fourth win of the season? If I was Chris Lucas, I wouldn't be surprised if they'll probably do a play where Jordan Canada is coming off the pick and roll. You have Hillman coming out of that as the post roller. And then you have the shooters in Blitzarves and Froling's gone off in this last quarter as well to help with the spacing. So here we go, under 90 seconds left in this game. Will it be the Boomers going four from four? All the Spirit notching up their first win of the season. It's all hands on deck. It gets to Hillman. Oh, good rejection there from Crocker. And Bendigo can perhaps take back the lead. They elect to go slowly here on this offensive set. Wilson finds a space. And Bendigo are back in the lead. Amazing game of basketball we're witnessing here at the boom box. Under a minute left. It's still anyone's game. Maybe that O word might come up. Is overtime on the cards or can Canada continue her great start to this fourth term? She loops it in. Melbourne back in the lead. She bakes a run and Bendigo scores. 40 seconds left here for the Spirit. What can Wilson do? Griffin. Back to Ali Wilson. A deep three. Can't make it. And the rebound falls to Canada. A crucial rebound. I feel like Bendigo could have got a better shot there. They still had 10 seconds on the shot clock. Krakenoush needed to foul. Canada hits the deck. 21 seconds left on the game clock. 17 on the shot clock. The Boomers lead by one. And look at this move from Jordan Canada to get her team back in the lead. 25 points in this ball game for her. Keely Froling now inbounding from the sideline. Bendigo need a stop. Crocker on Canada. She's happy to hold it up. And then sends it nearly into the backcourt. And Crocker fouls again. 13 seconds left on the clock. Nine on the shot clock. That almost looked like a cross-court violation. Ooh, very close, wasn't it? Every call crucial in this game. Every move, every bucket. It's been neck and neck for a long period of this one. Take a look at it again here. Did she go into Bendigo's half? Ooh. Very close, <laughs> very close. Crocker called for it as well. But either way, it's back with the Boomers. Canada finds herself free. She's immediately double teamed and fouled again. 12 left on the game clock. The Boomers fighting and scrapping to hold on to that lead. Bendigo went on an 8-0 run, and then Canada stopped all that with that recent two. And now she'll get to go to the line for a couple. Spirit in the bonus. What does Canada do here? Does she try and get both in? Does she try and miss one? To try and keep the ball? All the scenarios going through this star imports head. We hope you're enjoying the game at home. It's been a WNBL classic at the boom box. The crowd comes to a hush for joining Canada as she knocks down the first free throw and gets her team to a two point lead. Amy Rochi with some words of wisdom. Joining Canada up to 26 points, eight rebounds, seven assists. She misses the second. It's all or nothing here for Bendigo. 10 seconds to go. It's in Ali Wilson's hands. Now where um, Griffin's been the star all game. She looks for her. She finds her. Griffin, can she win the game for her team? She can't. It's Melbourne who escaped with the barest of margins. Get their fourth win of the season in front of an elated boombox crowd. 
they continue their perfect start to the season. They extend their advantage over Bendigo to 11 and 5 from the past 16 games. And after being trail, trailing in at the end of the first period, at the end of half time, and at the end of the third period, it is the Boomers somehow getting the win 76 over the Bendigo Spirits 74. What a game, Beck Cole. That was amazing to watch. What a last quarter. That was impressive by both teams on both ends of the floor. What an exciting game of basketball for all viewers out there. What an exciting game. So deflating for Bendigo Spirit. They need to come out of that being confident, though, knowing, hey, we've got Griffin back. Obviously, she was instrumental to us. But in a game where you're up for, for most of the third or fourth quarter, that, that hits hard. I know as a player, when you were up and you did the great things, you can see Griffin being the leader that she is, talking to her team, lifting them up. You have to keep fighting. We are almost there. But for Boomers, what a credit, what grit, what determination to keep fighting, come back with the win, and look how happy they are to have won that by two points. Absolutely. It comes off the back of a 26 point to 12 fourth terms. They put it all out there on the line. Jordan Canada played the full 40 minutes. 26 points to inspire her team to a victory. She's been instrumental all season and she kept her form up again today. She just lit it up and she is our player of the game. 26 points, eight rebounds and seven assists. Beth Cole, she is a remarkable player and really putting her name forward for that MVP at the end of the season. But most importantly, her team got the win today and it was off the back of her efforts. She is. She's definitely doing it on both ends of the floor. I think downhill off the pick and roll, she's so hard to stop. She has crafty little moves. You do have to stay down. She has ears. She could do the step through. Her pull-out game was on point tonight. And, yeah, she, she said, hey, team, I got you. I'm going to put you on my back and I'm going to help carry you. And, you know, they got the win done today. All credit has to go to Kelsey Griffin on Bendigo side of things as well. A career high, 33 points today. Her previous career high was 31 points in 2016. So she turned back the clock today and she so came so close to willing her team to a win. How good was it to see her back out there? So great to see the likes of Kelsey Griffin back in the league. Obviously, she's a well-respected player. She's so fun to watch. And what an amazing first game after her hamstring injury. She was also doing it on both ends of the floor, inside, outside. So great to see her. Not so great to come up against her soon. <laughs> but, you know, credit to her, her leadership, and I'm sure she'll help the team and Bendigo stay positive from this loss and move on to the next one. Absolutely. Bendigo leading the whole way in this game and then just crumbling at the end. You can see the boomers. What do you think inspired them to this fourth quarter performance? They just knew that they were in this game. It's just what good teams do, don't they, Beck? Don't they? Like we said, they had those, I guess, stoppages of Bendigo runs where they, they got back from that 15-point margin. They got it back to nine, back to eight. And I think once you can get it to five, it really does give you that glimmer of hope. And then at the other end of the floor, they were hitting down some big-time shots. There was a massive play from Rochi, Froling and Blitzards all on the three-point line. And then Canada was getting it done on the rim. And look at that, the fans getting around Amy Rochi back for her first game. How fantastic was it to see her out there? Seven points for her and two rebounds. Her first game in 345 days, coming off a back injury and concussion as well. So good seeing Amy out there. She's such a lovely girl. She's a great leader out on the floor. Um, she'll just be so happy that she's finally back because obviously, you've, as a player, you've gone through all that rehab for your back and then just so unfortunate at training that you get, you know, knocked out. And oh, as you see, that's little Arlo, <laughs> yeah. Sarah Blitzoff's nephew. Shout out, Arlo. Um, and just so, yeah, so happy to see Amy and she'll just be wrapped to the fact that she's back. Absolutely great to see Arlo out there having a ball because his auntie's team has just got a massive win, 76-74. And here They were digging down deep on defense and they were making things happen on the offensive end. 
Well, Melbourne will look to go five from five when they travel to Gippsland to host Jade Melbourne's Capitals in Jade's hometown on Sunday. And then Bendigo will look to bounce back at home against Sydney on Saturday. So a host of exciting games to come. It tips off on Wednesday night, Beck, with your Flyers taking on Perth at the SBC. And then Adelaide hosts Townsville the following night. It's a double header on Saturday with Bendigo taking on Sydney and then Perth up against Townsville. And as you mentioned, Melbourne up against the Caps. So, Beck, besides your own game, if you had to pick one to sit down in the couch and watch, which one would you pick? Going off how all the teams are going, I wouldn't actually mind the Perth and Townsville game would be a really good one. Obviously, they're up there in the top four at the moment. Um, they have similar styles where they have really great shooters, two really quick point guards. So I think that will be a very interesting game. Absolutely. You won't want to miss a moment of the round four action, but we're wrapping up round three here on Nine Now, Unbeaten.com and the FIBA YouTube channel today. We hope you enjoyed the coverage. And at the end of four action-packed quarters, it was the Boomers' security.